Finia Stonemars. The chaos of wars brought a new wave of refugees to these shores. Our streets are safe, no more. This is our city! They will never accept us. They will never understand us. It's time for a fresh start. Gods you don't know, do you? No one. Philo's alive. You're a police? I'm in charge with finding a man responsible for these... Aloha! This is Trinidad, the island man, your island man, coming to you live once again from beautiful Hawaii here on the island of Oahu, bringing you, yes you, the best movie reviews on the entire island of Oahu. But yet, today, you know, since last weekend, this following weekend that just uh, took place, there was nothing as far as movies except for the animated uh, Abominable which didn't do very well at the box office, and not being a little kid, I didn't want to go ahead and see it. Um, but let me talk about a, uh, you know, some of the TV shows, uh, since there was no really good new movies that came out to, worth going to go see. Uh, if you hadn't already seen Rambo, and unfortunately gone to go see Ad, Ad Astra, um, you know. So let me talk about uh, what I haven't talked about that dropped a couple of weeks ago, I think three weeks ago, the same time as Dark Crystal did on Netflix, but uh, Amazon's uh, series of similar fantasy, uh, you know, uh, kind of a uh, Victorian age drama uh, that they went ahead and they put on against uh, the Dark Crystal uh, called Carnival Row. Now, remember our rating scale? Shock a thumbs up. It's good to see. I recommend it. Shock a thumbs down. It's bad to say. See, it's junk. I won't, don't recommend it. And for the Amazon series Carnival Row, starring Orlando Bloom and Cara Delevingne, it is overall a shock a thumbs up. Um, you know, like, you know, let me just say this off the bat. It is not as strong as Netflix's Dark Crystal. So let me just say that right off the bat. Uh, so if you're on the fence about, oh, which one should I watch? Which one should I at least watch first? Since they're both a shock of thumbs up, uh, definitely go with the Dark Crystal first. Uh, you know, and you will not be dissatisfied with that. But, um, you know, Carnival Row is a shock of thumbs up. Uh, a friend of mine really liked it at work. Uh, I, however, oh my God, I was about ready to give it up on after episode two because episode one and two this is only a eight uh eight episode uh season one it has been renewed for season two and it does leave it up uh for a continuation uh, at the end i'll just tell you that that's not really a spoiler since it's three weeks later uh, but i would highly recommend that when you're watching these ep eight episodes you can just skip episode one and two and just get into the meat and the bones of it at episode three. Uh, episode one and two, basically you get a little bit of uh, the backstory. Uh, mainly in episode two, you get the backstory of these two characters that, uh, you know, uh, is relatively interesting, but ultimately, you know, it shows their love romance between Cara Delevingne and Orlando Bloom. Um, but honestly, other than that, you know, and it has some great visuals, uh, other than that, it's a snore, uh, up until the very end of episode two. Episode one is not even worth watching, even though it does set overall the entire narrative, the mystery of the story, which basically evolves around kind of in a, uh, Victorian time frame, alternate, uh, history, whereas, uh, mythical creatures are alive, such as fairies like Cara Delevingne's character. Uh, Orlando Bloom is like a English, although it's not really England, it's called the Berg, uh, but it, it pretty much is England for the most part. Everybody's got that accent, that English accent. Of course, everybody in England watching this is saying, what accent? <laughs> All right, whatever. Um, but, uh, but yes, so, you know, it's basically England. Uh, at or around the uh, beginnings of World War One, 
Um, whereas a, you know, a invading force kind of like Germany, I guess they suppose, has invaded these uh, mythical creatures' homeland. Uh, England or the Berg uh, goes to try to defend them, uh, which you see in episode two. Um, you know, you get a little bit of that backstory. Uh, but essentially they fail or they give up uh, after losing a couple of battles. Uh, in episode one, you see that the war has gone pretty bad for the mythical creatures, especially the fairies. And uh, basically, anybody who's anybody and is able to make it out heads to the Berg, where people can generally live, you know, there as refugees, essentially. And Carnival Row is kind of the red light district, the illegal district, where most of these uh, mythical creatures uh, conjugate. You know, the fairies, the, I don't know, I want to say minotaurs, but they're called something else in this. And they have more like goat-like uh, spin, uh, more like ram horns, I guess, uh, more than like bull minotaur horns. Um, you know, I forget what exactly they're called again in the show. Uh, really doesn't matter. Uh, just that they're different. And again, this is, a, this is a series that hones in on people's differences, uh, a.k.a. refugees' differences, different races, basically, and talking about stereotyping, racism, in that, uh, you know, very much analogy of today's, you know, in the EU, uh, in England, uh, people's, um, you know, uh, you know, hatred against those foreigners coming in to live who may not be of the same uh, economic or cultural class, uh, you know, not the right type of people uh, per se, you know. And so they live in like the red light district. That's where a lot of them uh, live anyways. There are some affluent ones. There's a nice side story about one of these minotaur-like creatures and a uh, rich, uh, aristocratic, uh, you know, higher class uh, human woman uh, falling in love and forming a relationship uh, that will probably be explored later and come back later in episode, uh, in season two. Um, but essentially that's like the positive thing. There is one with Orlando Bloom's character talking about a positive, you know, he's, he's, he's human, uh, basically. And uh, he falls in love with the fairy of Cara Delevingne during their time uh, in the war, in her lands. And uh, essentially, you know, he is forced away from her. He leaves her thinking he is doing her a favor so that she can live in peace over there and not be have to come back to where he lives, where there is such sub segregation and uh, discrimination. However, unfortunately, he does not realize that. But essentially, again, it settles around where Orlando Bloom's character is a police detective in Victorian times. Uh, the plot centers that he's centering around a uh, some type of a killer, maybe a um, Jack the Ripper type killer, uh, which later on we discover is actually a type of uh, demon. Uh, that's been summoned, uh, you know, without too much spoilers. And uh, basically that becomes a big part of the show and concluding episode uh, one, how he can defeat this demon and stop these murders. Um, you know, uh, I'll go into a little bit of spoilers here now, uh, talking about that we later throughout the episodes, we find out why he has such an affinity uh, for helping, you know, uh, these cast outs, these refugees, is because he's actually uh, part fairy as well uh, on his mother's side, but his wings were cut off at birth uh, so he could pass as human and have the potential for a better life. Um, all of that being said, uh, you know, it's kind of again explained in one and two you know, mainly episode two, but again, you don't really need it because again, it is hit upon in other uh, parts of, you know, the episodes of season one. 
and by the end of season one, uh, with their romance being the kind of the backdrop and alluded to as as his own uh, upbringings, uh, parents, uh, it kind of foreshadows uh, his life as well uh, towards this segregation and discrimination. Uh, and it ends very, much, much stronger than how it begins. Uh, so again, you know, with eight episodes, or preferably the six episodes, if you skip one and two, like I suggest, and just get right into three, you won't lose any of the story beats, uh, and it'll be much uh, better paced uh, for the show. Uh, they do seem to skimp a little bit on the effects, uh, you know, uh, whereas Netflix's uh, Dark Crystal pretty much embraces all of that. Uh, amazingly, this one kind of they pick and choose their moments to show like the mythical powers of these fairies and all of that. Uh, so, you know, they they do kind of choose their moments a little bit more strategically, uh, possibly saving money. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why. I guess maybe Amazon wanted to save some bucks with getting big stars like Cara Delevingne and Orlando Bloom uh, in the roles, but you know. I don't think their names really draw too much more to the show uh, as it is kind of an all-star cast. If you're familiar with the Harry Potter series, you get a lot of, basically a lot of English actors come in uh, and do creatures, do other characters that it's like, oh, you know, I know this guy. He sounds so familiar. He was like a teacher at Hogwarts, I think, and some of the Harry Potter films. Um, you know, so it is interesting in that respect. And I think season two will be much, much better now that they've got through the bulk and uh, the backstories of everybody and can just start fresh. Uh, but it's definitely looking more into a political uh, a political uh, drama, you know, now that everyone, uh, you know, becomes focused on the segregation issue of the refugees, mirroring real life. All right, so again, it is... I would say a shock of thumbs up uh, overall for Amazon's uh, Carnival Row. Go ahead and check it out when you can, uh, especially this last weekend and this upcoming weekend where there's not going to be too much at the movies. Uh, I'm not going to go see Joker. If you're not interested in seeing Joker either, I suggest you settle down with some of Netflix's stuff, Amazon stuff, and just play catch up from there. All right. Thank you so much and aloha.